Hello, thank you for joining us. I'm Ashley Evans, and you're watching Black Onyx, bringing you face to face with some of South Africa's most talented asset managers. And today I'm joined by Len Jordan, who's head of ETFs at ABSA. Thank you so much for joining us, Len. Thank you for having me. To start off with, tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got to where you are. After leaving school, I studied a Bachelor of Commerce at, at what was Rao in the, back in the day, and then I did an honours degree in economics and left, uh, left university and joined a, a small asset-based finance company where I uh, used to finance medical equipment predominantly. I was then offered a position in the JSE's graduate recruitment programme, uh, and I was there for seven years, and that was really my first introduction to derivatives and exchange-traded funds, because by that stage, uh, the JSE had incorporated SAFEX under their, under their banner as well. Um, after that, I joined Rand Merchant Bank and set up the exchange traded fund business uh, in the equities team. And following the three years there, uh, I, I had spent some time in Australia working, working in the Australian business. I uh, joined Stanlib Asset Management and, uh, and set up an exchange traded funds business there. Um, but started using um, unit trusts as well, or issuing uh, new unit trusts. And now I find myself back in investment banking with, with APSA Capital for the last two years. Who is APSA Capital? So Absa Capital has gone through quite a lot of change since I joined. Um, obviously, being part of Barclays um, when, I, when I initially started, you know, rolling out of the Barclays brand has been quite an interesting journey, I think, probably for people that have been here a lot longer than I have. I find it very exciting. I think uh, the people that I work with are excited about the opportunities in the South African market and also the fact that they won't be dictated, their, their strategy is not going to be di dictated to, they can now come up with their own strategies, I think is an exciting place for the bank to be as a whole. Your new funds have risk managed in the name. What are these risks? So we've done quite a lot of work on risk premium investing generally. Um, we think that there's a lot of risks that can be exploited um, and risks that should be actively taken by investors. But there are a lot of risks that, that aren't rewarded. And, and that investors should avoid. And um, most of the funds that we issue now try to actively exploit the risks that are awarded in the South African market. So we have a range of risk premium funds, we have a value fund, we have a momentum fund, and we have a, a low volatility fund. And then we've also got into the multi-asset space um, where we try to reduce the volatility of portfolios and reduce the losses of portfolios. And I'll get into a little bit about the logic of those a little bit later. But essentially what those try to do is they try to target a very specific level of volatility in your portfolio. And the logic behind that is that if you can reduce the volatility in your portfolio, you can reduce the losses um, that, that you will experience um, on a day-to-day -day basis. What are some of the risks involved? So the, one of the risks is volatility. Or Volatility isn't a risk on its own, but it's certainly an indicator of risk. You know, volatility would be an indication that there's a lot of uncertainty in the market. So it's, it's an indication that people are unsure about where asset prices should be and that the, that uncertainty often leads to, to market crashes. Uh, the research that we've done would indicate that if you have a sudden spike in volatility in the equity market, you're likely to have a, an immediate, and when I say immediate, within the next 24 hours, you're likely to have an immediate drawdown in your equity portfolio. So we manage our portfolios on a daily basis. We, we get a snapshot of what that volatility is, and we try to mitigate those risks as, as much as we can. Obviously, the main risk um, that we're trying to manage is the risk of losses, and we do that by managing the volatility. So the main risk, uh, to answer your question, is, is the risk of losses, and how we do that is to, is to manage the volatility. Are there any other risks? Uh, the other risks would be um, very excessive exposures to a small number of shares. If the South African market is a case in point, uh, is that if you're exposed to the top 40 index in South Africa, probably the majority of your, or 60% of your price performance is only coming from, from 10 of those stocks. So you, you may as well only be exposed to 10 shares. You know, if you look at the NASPAS problem that we're having at the moment, NASPAS is about 25% of the index right now. Um, that's not a new problem for South Africa. If you look back over time, we've always had very large exposure to a small number of shares. Uh, previously it was the mining stocks, um, and that is something that we try to manage in our portfolios by adopting quite a, an in innovative um, weighting strategy for each of the shares in our portfolio. And how do you reduce dips? The first way we do, and this is, this is really the logic behind our low volatility fund, is that we only purchase shares that have a low volatility relative to the market. So we look at standard deviation as, as a measure of volatility, and then we also look at the relative volatility of the stock relative to the market. So that, that's, called, that's called the beta. We'll pick shares that have a low standard deviation 
and have a low beta. And typically what you're trying to do is you're trying to reduce the peaks and troughs of the share price that you experience on a, on a daily basis. And that strategy uh, proves to outperform by a little bit most of the time. And obviously over very long periods of time, that little bit of outperformance that you get over shorter time periods tends to build up quite nicely. As an example, the market has returned 4% year to date. Um, our low volatility fund has, has returned 11% year to date. And it tends to hold up quite nicely in, um, in, in bear markets as well. So when the market's going down, low volatility tends to be quite a resilient uh, risk factor. Can these strategies be used in unit trusts and ETFs? Yes, absolutely. Um, it's possible to systematize how you allocate to the shares. So you can, you know, as long as you can write the methodology that you're following into an index, you can then structure a unit trust or an ETF that simply tracks the index. There's no active management involved. We don't employ you know, five analysts that, that pour over uh, co company financial statements. We can, we can systematize everything that we do. The model tells us what to buy and the asset manager just, just buys what the model tells him. So there's no second guessing involved. It means that we, we might buy shares that where there's some sort of a price anomaly coming out. But as I mentioned, we try to reduce that risk by not taking excessive exposure to any one share at any point in time. How do you compare to some of your peers? We don't really have uh, many peers in the South African market. Uh, I think APSA is one of the few uh, product providers that provides single factor or single risk premier exposure. We stack up really well from a, a performance perspective. So uh, our momentum fund has returned almost 20% year to date and our low volatility fund has performed, as I said, 11% uh, year to date. That's the two best performing uh, equity uh, ETFs in the South African landscape. The only ones that have performed better are the, are the commodity funds. Uh, you know, gold and platinum have had a really good time. And then the S&P 500 in RAND has also done really well because the RAND has, has done extremely poorly this year. So we, we stack up uh, pre pretty well from, uh, you know, relative to our peers. And, and we're really satisfied with the performance that we've been getting. Even our value fund, which hasn't performed very well, the feedback that we're getting from the market is that people uh, expected value to perform quite poorly in the current environment and that our index fund is performing as expected. In the current environment, a lot of people are moving their money offshore. Can you talk to this? I can't. Uh, <laughs> we, don't have, we don't have international funds. So we do have a note that invests in a multi-factor MSCI a risk premium index with a, with a target volatility strategy on top of that. So that's a relatively conservative fund for investors and I think that that actually works quite nicely in this environment because a lot of people are looking for offshore exposure but once they've converted their RAND into hard currency it's a, it's a really difficult decision on where to invest. Uh, you know people are talking about the, the valuations of the companies in the S&P and obviously US stocks make up quite a big proportion of the MSCI world. Uh, there's negative yields on a lot of European bonds and uh, cash is earning you virtually nothing. So, you know, once you've, once you've converted your rand uh, to, to foreign currency, finding a natural home for it is, is, qu is quite tough. And we think that this, uh, this note uh, is, is, is a nice safe haven type of asset to, in, to invest in. Let's chat about some of your other funds. What we've done is we've said, once you're invested in equity, um, it's, it's good to be exposed to low volatility stocks, but even low volatility stocks can become highly volatile. So when the market crashed in 2008, even if you invested in low volatility stocks, you would have still experienced around about a 25% volatility, which is extremely high. Um, so we've introduced something in South Africa in fund format. It's the first time it's been, uh, been done in funds, which is a target volatility. And what that allows investors to do is to match an exact volatility of what they would like to experience uh, in the portfolio. And, and how we achieve that is by investing in cash when volatility spikes. Now the strategy is based on some research that we've done that shows that when volatility spikes massively in equities, it's, it's always followed, or 90% of the time, it's followed by an immediate drawdown uh, in, in share prices. And so what we try to do is when we see that volatility spike in share markets, we sell some of the shares and we invest in cash, which theoretically has a volatility of zero, so that overall your portfolio has the volatility that you selected. The three strategies that we have is conservative, moderate and, and high growth. The conservative fund has a target volatility of 8%, the moderate fund has a target volatility of 15%, and the high growth is, tw is 20%. Uh, to put that in perspective, um, historically South African equities has a volatility of around 18%. So you can see that the conservative fund would be invested 
probably between 30 and 40 percent of the time in, in equities and 60 percent in cash. Uh, the moderate fund would be 75 percent in equities and 25 percent in cash and the high growth fund would typically be 100 percent in cash. But all three of these funds can be 100 percent in equity or 100 percent in cash. In 2008 for example all three of these funds would have been 100 percent in cash so investors would have been earning around about a six or seven percent yield when equity markets had crashed by 30 or 40 percent. What the strategy then tries to do is that when volatility comes down it starts to invest back into cash so that, so that you're participating in the recovery of equities and you're benefiting from that excess return that equities would, would typically give you over cash on a long-term basis. Len, thank you so much for joining us and thank you for watching Black Onyx.